The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is day one wrap up of three days of live coverage of theCUBE here at OpenStack Summit live in Atlanta. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events, I start to see them from the noise. I'm John Furrier, here with Stu Miniman. Stu, we're wrapping up day one, a long day. Um, East Coast, it's hot in Dallas. I'm looking out the window here, I see the CNN building. Um, eat your heart out CNN with the Cube. Um, we love coming to Atlanta. What did you think of day one? My first impressions were, um, Good vibe, just not seeing the customers, Stu. I'm just not seeing the customers. I mean, you know, we had MetaCloud up here, great, great entrepreneur, Sean Lynch, Disney, great mention. Uh, but I'm just not seeing the customers. Same, same old, same old. Um, certainly a momentum on the foundation side. I feel that that's a big story. The foundation and the technical committee had a board meeting last night, and word has it that's a solid meeting. A lot of solidarity between the communities, uh, and overall, just the attendance is, is off the charts. Uh, big news there. Um, Piston Cloud doing a telco deal. Uh, outside of that, just again, a love fest. Not a lot of mudslinging going on. What's yeah, your take? Yeah, so John, 4,600 people, double what there was last year. Ice House is out, but I really think we are poised to go into the trough of disillusionment. Uh, there are, you know, gaps in the solution set. Neutron has uh, some bugs out there, and, and I agree with you a thousand percent. Uh, the, the companies that are talking about what they're doing are the big service providers, uh, companies like, you know, big, big, big companies that you know, like, uh, you know, Disney, uh, you know, Wells Fargo and the like, um, and there are plenty of people trying this out, and there's a lot of people here trying to figure out what OpenStack is, but you know, I, I think we're going to have that gap where things need to be solidified, and all the big companies that are putting a lot of effort, you know, IBM, HP, Cisco, uh, you know, Red Hat, are all trying to help you know, cross the chasm uh, for this technology, and I think it's going to take a little bit of time, and that's a big risk for this community, uh, because if we don't really start seeing revenue in the next 12 to 18 months, this could all implode. Uh, Stu, <laughs> you use the words implosion, I totally agree with you, but I got to tell you, the excitement from some serious players involved in OpenStack here pretty, uh, is going to prevent the implosion. In my opinion, the, you have way too much muscle, both in Mindshare and muscle from, from old school dudes like Lou Tucker, Eileen Evans, uh, only female on the board on the Linux board from HP. We had uh, Evan Powell, the, the CEO of Stackstorm on. He was awesome. He's a founder of Nextenta. These are some serious dudes who have experience. This isn't like, hey, we're trying to you know, get some hype and I'm right out of college trying to put a script together. You know, these are guys who are all saying, by the way, the same thing. It's still early days. I think what's happened with OpenStack, and this is my take, in my opinion, synthesizing and reading the tea leaves. I think the OpenStack Foundation and, the, and its community has realized this is a BFD, big freaking deal. And they realize, let's not push this forward too fast. Let's win the cloud. Let's, let's make sure the foundation is firmly set. So I think what you're seeing is a lot of wrangling of the troops in the community saying, let's get this right. There's too much at stake. There's way too many people with big minds and big budgets saying we are going to make it happen. And I don't see any red flags, Stu, on the foundation side. Not a lot of politics, not a lot of mudslinging, but certainly a calm before the storm. That's the only rationalization I can see from not seeing customers lined up. Yeah, I, I mean, John, on theCUBE, we're, we're big proponents of open source projects. Uh, you know, I, I definitely think that we're, we're pulling for OpenStack to be able to move forward. Um, you know, the, the, the question is, we, we've been saying, you know, soon, it's coming soon. Um, you know, the, the, we'll, we will have, you know, good solutions that customers can deploy, and it, it's, it's a very fragmented solution set. I, I agree with you, there's not, you know, uh, you don't come here and say, oh, geez, you know, company X and company Y are, are really going to sync this. Um, you know, when VMware got involved in OpenStack originally, it was like, oh, they're going to just slow things down and there's too many companies involved to, that are going to be the, the lifeguard here. I mean, IBM, you know, is going to work hard to make sure that this stays open source. Um, HP you know, too. I mean, HP, the, I, I mean, absolutely. I wasn't just singling out IBM. But, Monty Taylor know. is an impressive guy. Eileen's impressive. IBM, I mean, we talked to, uh, we talked to Todd Moore here and her, um, Meg Swanson. 
all players. Yeah, so, so, so John, the, the question is, is you know, who's really going to make out when you, when you talk about this? Uh, you know, we were at Red Hat a, you know, a month or so ago, um, and you know, Red Hat's now a $1.3 billion company. You know, is somebody going to make you know, a billion dollars, and gonna, is it going to take 15 years to get there? Um, or you know, what, what are we going to do? Um, I love the quote from Evan Powell earlier today, and said, if you think that you are going to out Red Hat, Red Hat, uh, to build a distribution for OpenStack, you know, you are, you know, setting yourself up for disaster. But Red Hat's got to get there, got to get, got to get a fire lit under their butt because what's happening, you're seeing a lot of momentum going on and, and you know, we love Red Hat. I think they're, they have the pole position in my opinion if you want to use the NASCAR analogy. They certainly, at the start of this race, they, they got a good, they won the, the first heat, they're at the pole position. It's theirs to lose in my opinion and the rest are moving fast. So the question is, this is all out in the open, so I think Red Hat's got the chops to do it, and I think you know, the container is a huge undercurrent, Stu. It's not, I mean, it's not stealing the show. It's not, there's no container announcements, there's no Docker stuff going on here, but the talk of containers has been big, certainly on our crowd chat. Um, it was our number one chat voted up over hundreds and hundreds of votes on it already. Um, so I think containers will be a big part of it. Yeah, and, and John, I, I liked, you know, the, 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 where's the white space? Is some of the, the, some of the solutions out there that can help orchestrators simplify this. We just had MetaCloud on and talked about how can we deliver OpenStack to people that don't get OpenStack. It's great that there's all the developers here, you know, the, the hoodies, the, the beards, you know. The, the, the here's why I like, here's why I like, here's why I like MetaCloud. Yeah. MetaCloud's entire delivery process is very DevOps-like. The customer experiences seamless upgrading. So if you're a developer on the, stat, on the DevOps side, you want integrated stacks. You push some code, all the versioning control takes care of itself, not a lot of patch updates. This new generation of developers, doesn't, they don't want to load patches. Those days are over with automation and orchestration. That stuff is now going away. All the guys that are programming in that environment will never go back. Once you go DevOps, you can never go back. What they're doing at MetaCloud really, to me, telegraphs the future of delivery. Push button subscription, completely abstracting away complexity around what's in it to the outcome of the solution. And I think that you're going to see that in vertical markets. So I think that uh, Storm Ventures is very smart to invest in them because one is a leverage model on, on, the, on the economics. But I think that's going to be the preferred experience. And to me, that's what I'm looking for at this show. New enablement creates new experiences, new customer outcomes, and we're looking for that stuff that hasn't been seen yet. Mark Shuttleworth said, he said you know, the stuff that's going to happen in the future, no one can see yet. And that's really what we're looking for, Stu. Yeah, so, so John, you know, may, maybe I've been to too many of the big vendor shows because I'm looking for a big announcement or a wow or kind of an aha, and I haven't seen it yet at this show. There's some more announcements to come over the next couple of days. Um, th there's a lot of good community building, um, you know, going beyond the developer, going to the operators and the users. Um, and there's a lot of goodness here, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to digging yeah, into we a don't, lot we more Yeah, we don't pieces. have that first shot. We need the first shot heard around the world. I don't have, Stu, I want to see an OpenStack shot. You know, someone, the first shot's fired, something big has to happen. It's not happening, in my opinion, yet. It's a lot of like, you know, the big swell has not come in. Yeah, there's some waves we're surfing on them, but the problem is, is that I just don't see the big punch. I mean, so we're waiting. Yeah, I, I agree, and you know, good, really good guests on today. We've got another two days uh, where we're going to cover it, John. Yeah. Um, you, you know, not some of the, the typical, uh, you know, guests that we've had on. Uh, you know, but really a broad spectrum of the ecosystem, and uh, you know, it, I'm excited to be here. Well, I want to thank uh, the folks out in the Twitter sphere and LinkedIn and Facebook for coming on our crowd chat. We had a great uh, crowd chat today. Just scrolling through some of the numbers here, uh, 3,000 uh, folks. 2.2 million timeline impressions reached, 356 posts on CrowdChat, there's 53 people online right now. Go to CrowdChat.net, that's our new beta product that's going to come out of beta for the public probably in about a week. And uh, it's an engagement container, it's a new cutting edge technology that was developed by the new startup CrowdChat. It's an engagement container, it originates the conversations, activates them and measures them, it's all in a container, shoots it to the hashtag. Go there, it's going to be on the record, it's, it's recorded as is with votes sorted to the top. So get in there, make a comment, thread a conversation, vote on your favorites, and the vote top votes will go to the top. Of course, this is theCUBE, we'll be back all day tomorrow, and we'll be watching the crowd chats for your questions, and uh, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage here at OpenStack. We'll see you tomorrow for day two. This is theCUBE.